behind the scenes at Score North and 1500 ESPN have sports opinions. So they want you to hear them. It's the perfect digital sports soapbox to scratch that Minnesota sports itch. This is the Score North Taxi Squad. Is facing the Phoenix Suns in the first round truly the most nightmarish scenario for the Timberwolves? Or are Minnesota fans living just a little rent-free in their own heads and this matchup isn't as intimidating as we all think? Welcome back to the Score North Taxi Squad, everybody. My name is Jason Stormer, joined, oh, I should point this way, joined alongside Artist Woods, just the two of us today, as we welcome you to the beginning of the NBA playoffs for the 2024 season. It's been a long road for all of us Timberwolves fans and all of us NBA fans. I'm rocking my generic Timberwolves hoodie today. I'm excited about the upcoming series, even though it is going to be quite an intimidating matchup. But again, like I just started the show, it might not be as intimidating as we all think. Artists, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling all the vibes and the positivity about this Wolves playoff series that is upon us? I am feeling wait, is the mic on? Yes it is. <laughs> yes, Couldn't hear myself. Yeah. I'm feeling great. <laughs> I'm feeling great, Woo! man. It is the best time of the year to be a basketball fan. It's a great time to be a Wolves fan. I do not care. I mean, I do care about the matchup, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't care about the matchup, man. The Wolves have shown me enough that say that they can get it done. So I'm excited, man. Uh, I think the Wolves might be on the break of a, of a run here. And uh, I, I'm excited. That's so why I'm doing all the, the finger snapping, which I snap real loud. So that's why I didn't actually snap. <laughs> Very good. Um, and all it is, like, I'm just like, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go. It's that time, man. It's time. Forget all the scary stuff. It's time. <laughs> Whereas, we don't find ourselves in this situation too often. Uh, like Minnesota, just at least for the Timberwolves, playoff success doesn't really come around. We've talked about it a ton. We've only gotten out of the first round one time. That was pretty much the peak of the Kevin Garnett days. But obviously, we have a lot of anticipation for just where Anthony Edwards can can potentially take this team also where Carl Anthony Towns and other pieces can take this team as well obviously Rudy Gilbert has had an awesome season but let's dive into us artists I imagine that there are a lot of apprehensive Timberwolves fans that are watching and listening to this episode today because admittedly I did too even feel a little bit of a pit in my stomach when I found out that the Wolves had to take on the Phoenix Suns in the first round of the NBA playoffs here Look, I don't think we even need to beat this too much either, uh, but we know the narrative about what the Phoenix Suns have done to the Minnesota Timberwolves this season. 3-0, and and really none of the matchups have been close whatsoever. It's been a pretty thorough beating by the Phoenix Suns. And so, Artis, I want to start off pretty much with this. I wasn't able to actually catch a lot of the last game of the season against the Suns on that Sunday. It was my niece Roan's birthday, uh, and we had her party during that day, so I wasn't able to watch that, or honestly, a lot of the last day of the Masters, too. I always like checking out the final round of the Masters, but frankly, it wasn't very close. Scotty Scheffler was the favorite, and he pretty much walked the final couple holes already wearing that green jacket. Anyway, conversation for another day. So I didn't get to catch much of the game, but Artis, I'm guessing you did, because I actually think you were at the station. You got to watch most of the game. 19 turnovers in the first half. Is that correct? Did I read that correctly? 19 yeah, man. turnovers. Man, that is... Look, we've talked about the turnovers a lot with this Minnesota Timberwolves team, but if this is going to be that big of a problem against the Phoenix Suns in the playoffs, that might be a huge issue. But how, how are you feeling initially after you heard the news that the Wolves will take on the Suns here in the first round? Yeah, man, they were down 22 at the end of the first quarter. That's all you need to know. Yeah, yeah. that's all you need to know. Yep. The turnovers, that's all you need to know. It was, it was, it was one of those nights. I feel like since, like, it's it's like every time they play Phoenix, it's been just one of those nights. Like, you can't get shots, shots to fall. Um, the Stars have not really shown up against them very well. I think Ant had one decent, or I'm sorry, Cat had one pretty decent game against them but they lost. Anthony Edwards, I mean, the stat is out there, 43 points on 42 shots mm. in the three matchups that he's faced him. Even Nas Reed has kind of struggled against him as well. Yes. And so it's, it's, it is it is a weird matchup. We're not going to act like it's not a tough matchup for the Wolves. You got three stars on the team that can really go off at 30 to 40. You need to give a night. Do not sleep on Bradley Bill because he just went off of, what was it, 36 last time he played. Oof. And so he's another guy that you can't sleep on. Um, but I'm optimistic, man. I think – I think Coach Finch may have been trying to hold some things back, as he should, knowing that this probably – Judd, let me not take credit away from Judd, because Judd said that. So I'm just <laughs> echoing, with the, I'm echoing what Judd said. I'm Our not sports dad deserves all the love, as he yes. always does. He, he's, the, he's the first one to say it, so I'm going to give credit where it's due there. He said it, and I, I couldn't agree more. I think that they – I think they was holding some things back, as they should. I think Finch had some ideas, but he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to show my cards because we might end up playing these guys. And sure enough, it was a smart decision because you lined up to play these guys. Um, I'm optimistic, though. I mean, there are some things you got to fix. I mean, obviously, the stars have to play better. You got to get off to faster starts. I think those are two obvious things. I think they should look to double team whoever has the hot hand. 
um, in, in this series, whether it be KD or, Dev, or Devin Booker, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe the biggest key, and these are all keys I said on Four Wolves Takes, so if y'all want in-depth analysis, y'all make sure y'all tune into that as well. Mm. But you got to keep Nurkic off the boards, man. He is known to dominate the boards at times. He could really take over a game, just offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. Um, but the good thing about all of these things is the Wolves have the personnel to – Make it happen. They have the personnel to out-rebound Nurkic and make sure he's not dominating the glass. They have the personnel to make things tough on KD and Devin Booker and even Bradley Bill, right? They have the personnel to get off to faster starts, and um, they have a, the, the personnel to, for the starters to play better. Like, mm-hmm. it's Anthony Edwards. It's Carl Anthony Towns. They, ha- they, they have what they need. It's just about making sure they live up to the moment. You have home court advantage. Mm-hmm. The Suns have a ton of star power, but it is not as daunting as people make it seem. They're the sixth seed for a reason. Yes, a lot of that has to do with injuries, but they have flaws as well. The defense isn't immaculate. They struggle in the fourth quarter. And last thing I'll say before I kick it back to you, last two years in the playoffs, Kevin Durant, best player in this series, resume-wise, but he struggled the last two years in the playoffs Mm -hmm. with teams that got physical with him. I mean, one year he shot like 33% from the three, um, 39% from the field. That was against Boston when he played for the Nets. And in the series against Denver just last year, he averaged twenty about 30 points a game, but shot 45% from the field and 22% from three. Mm. Get physical with him, bump him off his spots, you have a shot. Yeah, and considering KD doesn't really have much of a post game, I mean, he's going to live well, or did. die. I mean, he does, he but he's gotten now. older, and it's just not – I don't think it's not as effective as maybe it was like maybe five years ago. I, I don't know. For real, for whatever reason, KD just seems to be camping out on the perimeter most of the time whenever I watch Phoenix Suns games. But that's kind of just the MO of the team anyway. They are a jump-shooting team. When you have three players like Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant, you are going to do a lot of shooting as yourself. But you mentioned it as already, artists. This is a pretty small team. Team. This is a team that plays a lot of smaller five lineups, and to their advantage, it actually works very well. I know that Royce O'Neal is a pretty undersized power forward at 6'6", but he's been a very effective player for them, at least a little bit in the post, and it gives them a little bit of size, but still, this is a pretty small team. Now, if we think about that comparison to the Wolves and how that could be a detriment to the Wolves is kind of what we talked about with how Jokic was playing with Rudy Gobert in the most recent Denver Nuggets game against the Wolves. He pretty much drew Rudy out towards the free throw line all the time in that game, and I can definitely see the Phoenix Suns doing that also in this matchup uh, with a smaller lineup. I think also Bradley Beal has a lot to prove, not necessarily as a player, because I think he's def- like he, he is a great player, yeah, and I, he's not got nothing to prove to me. I think he has a lot to prove to himself because he had a lot of rough years in Washington. A couple decent years with John Wall, but most of the time that was a pretty dire situation for Bradley Beal. Now that he has this opportunity to be in the playoffs, he's going to want to show out. He's already talked about pretty much the keys and what it's going to take to stop Anthony Edwards. Get up on him. That's what he said after postgame or pregame. I can't remember exactly which, which it was. And we saw that executed in the last game against the Suns as well. And... I'm not going to sit here and say that like Phoenix has this magic elixir, this Anthony Edwards antidote, but I mean the numbers have been pretty pretty objective exactly about what they've been able to do, and that's clearly just double-teaming Ant in ways that I think other teams haven't really been able to do or been willing to do anyway. What they, were you going to say? They were do- they're doing something to Anthony Edwards that I think that you can do to Kevin Durant in the same way when he has hmm. the ball at the top of the key okay. or even Devin Booker at the top of the key. They got like this, and Dane Moore has broke it down, I think, Judd and Phil have talked about it a bit. They they got this, this like triangle defense that they're running where it's like you have oh. one one defender on him at the top of the key or wherever he is, and you have two other defenders who's – they're guarding their man, but not really. They really hmm. got the eyes on Ant. So if sure. he drives left, defender there, drive right, defender there, and it's forcing him to make a decision whether he wants to go up and force a shot, if he wants to drive through and get it, get to the free throw line, get to the lane, or if he's kicking it to the corner to an open shot, to an open shooter. The corner, the corner three with that defense will be wide open off series. Interesting. So guys like Jamie hmm. Daniels, guys like Mike Conley, guys like Kyle Anderson, when that defense is played, he's going to draw that attention whichever way he goes. So that corner three is going to be wide open. All, and the Suns are okay letting that go. They will they will allow you to shoot that corner three all game. Especially if Jaden McDaniels is going to shoot as poorly as he has most of the time. But, I mean, that's that's a conversation we can have here in just a little bit. But I think they, yeah. can, do, they, can, they can literally run that for KD or for, or for Booker. And yeah. I really like, like, the kill Alexander Walker be guarding Devin Booker pretty well. Like, I'm okay with like, him, I'm okay with him guarding either him or Beal. Honestly, yes. if, if those if yeah. he finds switch between either of those two, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over Nah though, guarding either of them. Even though uh, Bradley Beal kind of kind of kind of 
he, he did his thing, you know what yeah. I'm saying, to him this past game. But for, yeah. for the longevity of a playoff series, I don't think you can expect that every game from Bradley. No, Bill, and I'm so. sure Nas going to want to do something about that a little yes. bit too, yes. I would I would imagine. Of course. Um, yeah, but I think the whole U- Yusuf Nurkic thing, Artis, um, he, he's had not necessarily his way with the Wolves. I mean, honestly, I kind of did a deep dive of looking at like the plus minus for a lot of, of Phoenix's starters against the Wolves this season. It was actually a really depressing tale yeah, man. because I believe Grayson Allen's I, I, he, like out of any team, he had the best plus minus out of any team he's played this season against the Wolves. Kevin Durant also had the best plus minus against any team he's played this season. And that was against the Wolves. Devin Booker. I think there was only one other Western conference team where he had a better plus minus. I think the same case with Bradley Beal point is, there is definitive objective stats that actually show just how much the Phoenix Suns have uh, kicked the Timberwolves butts this season and obviously things change in the playoffs defenses get locked down a lot of things are going to change but one thing I was actually really surprised to learn Artis the Timberwolves are a bottom 10 NBA team in the clutch defensive rating. Mm. I was really surprised to learn that so is Phoenix actually I, I, I saw that the Phoenix also is That's bottom in yeah, Phoenix is bottom in that as well. Uh, I believe also Phoenix has a higher turnover percentage in the clutch yes. as well, which you think with the Wolves, I mean, the, is there an NBA team that turns the ball over more than the Minnesota Timberwolves? Probably, maybe not, but it just doesn't necessarily feel that way. So in a weird way, the Wolves do kind of match, the, the Suns and the Wolves do match a little bit more defensively than I thought, probably in times that matters most. But I think more than anything, artists, I mean, the way the Wolves are going to get wins, and I believe last time I checked, we're not the favorites in this series. I think it's pretty slight. Last time I checked, I think the Suns were minus 115. We were minus 105. I'm guessing that has moved. And every website you find is picking the Suns to win this series. Yeah. Every single one. But the weird thing about that is that the Wolves are favored by one and a half in game one. So that's kind of strange. I guess they're looking at the long-term thing here with that. But, I mean... One of two things are going to happen, Artis. I mean, we are going to just point out that, like, hey, if they lose in this first round of the series, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. It may even be labeled as a failure. But hey, it ain't they, no may. It is a failure. It is a failure. <laughs> it is a failure. But then the flip side of that, too, if they win, then I had this conversation with Grant, who couldn't join us today, unfortunately. Then it's game on for the NBA Finals. I am going to, at least as a fan, be pretty much entirely invested that this team can make it through the Western Conference, no matter if they have home ice or don't have home ice, uh, depending on later in the rounds. I just think that this provides us such a, a matchup that can really silence any of the doubts that we've had about the maturity of this Timberwolves team, maybe the youth of this Timberwolves team not having, not being like old enough to maybe come through in these first rounds. Phoenix provides us more to silence those narratives more so than I say beating New Orleans or Sacramento or even Golden State kind of Absolutely. at this point. Man, mm-hmm. yeah, I got to give you credit, man. Golden State, they Absolutely. were just looking to grab the golf clubs, hop on Clay Thompson's boat in the bay, and just kick it for the rest of the season. It was, man, it. I was hoping man. for that matchup. So I'm no like, kidding. Dude, if they get Golden State, they go into the second round easy. Yeah, but, I mean, hey, it, uh, they they just yeah. they couldn't even make it. So. No, it was it was it was honestly a little sad to watch because we've obviously seen yeah. Steph, Clay, and Draymond kind of vaulted to the upper echelons of the NBA, and just to kind of see them kind of feebly go out, and obviously that team's going to change so much. But this yeah. this this isn't about the Golden State Warriors. We ain't wrapping up the Golden State Warriors season. We are the Minnesota Timberwolves, and we still got a little bit of basketball to play. Um, one thing I do want to potentially point out, artists, though, is that I do want to, and I know this is more negative potentially. But I do want to point out maybe some of our guys who, if they get off to slow starts or if they get off to really bad stretches during some of these games, that I won't be actually afraid to bench some of these guys for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Would you like me to hear hear some of these names yeah, that I got? Throw them out there. Uh, now, look, I think some of these are pretty obvious, but you know, I'll throw out a couple numbers to justify it at least. And again, I'm going to kind of go back to the plus minus stat as well, which I know isn't a definitive stat, but I think it tells a huge story just about these two teams. It starts with Jaden McDaniels. Mm. Unfortunately, I know you are going to be paying that man a lot of money next season. That is the last thing you want to do. But for exactly you just talked about artists, if the Suns are going to be uh, running the opposite of whatever Phil Jackson's triangle offense is on, <laughs> on defense, defense. Right, right, right. on defense, <laughs> if Jaden is not able to hit those open shots that you say are going to be there, then 
it's going to be a huge problem because, look, the Wolves are already a good scoring team as well. We need us firing on all cylinders if those if those lanes are actually open. And he has a minus eight eight point seven plus a point differential against the Suns this season. Uh, another candidate who has a high one as well at nine point negative nine point seven is Kyle Anderson as well. He's had a pretty rough, at least the stats would say, and he's been kind of up and down too. Artists, we've kind of had our uh, our um, um, hesitations about slow mo this season. He was kind of up for being even a trade candidate towards the trade deadline. Maybe the Wolves getting some uh, other wing help because he wasn't playing that well. He played much better down the stretch, but again, he has not played good against the Phoenix Suns this season. Uh, also, um, Carl Anthony Towns. Now, this has nothing to do with matchups against the Phoenix Suns. It just has to do with the fact that we've had to bench him before. Mm. And that probably isn't fair to Cat. He hopefully is a different player going into these playoffs mentally and physically. Hopefully physically he's all good to go. He had a couple games to warm up a little bit against the Hawks and the Suns. And he looked he looked okay for the most part. But Artis, we know what happened against those Grizzly games. You yes. know, towards the end of a man. Yes. Him, oh, him and man. D'Lo were just unplayable. And... Obviously, those were different teams, different temperament teams as well, like younger teams. And I don't expect really any any kind of like that kind of issue with Carl. But again, if he's just playing poorly or if, God forbid, the offense decides to go exclusively through him like it's done before and just four shots with him, which I just don't think we just have too many ancillary pieces for that to happen. I just don't think that will. I, I just have to throw his name out there just because it has happened before. But finally... And I, I really don't want to do this because the man's about to be six man of the year. Nas Reed. You, you want to bench all these guys? If they if if they're struggling, I don't know. I mean, now granted, if one of these guys is struggling, it means probably another one isn't. So I'm not saying like all right, if, right, obviously right. you gotta play some if all these guys are struggling this way, you gotta yeah, play yeah, at least yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. right? But if, if like all these individually guys are struggling, this is gonna be a sweep. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> gonna be, yeah, be we'll sweet. be talking about it pretty quick next week. No, I'm just saying if like individually we're seeing kind of issues with these players. Now, granted, obviously these guys could all play terribly all at once, but I think that would speak more to the team if it's still a close game and we're just not seeing enough out of these particular guys that's what I'm looking for and yes I did say Nas Reed because he has a negative 13 points he's played bad against, against, he's, against he's, the he's, Suns he's not played well against yeah. the Suns at all I I, yeah. I hear what you're saying thank you um, I know it's kind I, of out I, there I, I know I definitely hear what you're what you're saying and where you're coming from <laughs> yeah. I only thing I would say is I think coach Finch needs to have very fluid lineups in this in this mm-hmm. especially in this series um because the the Suns are small and I know they will start big as they should but you got with certain lineups, you kind of have to play Kyle. Like you might have to put Kyle at the four, maybe even a five at times if KD's at the five. Mm, yeah, um, maybe. You know, same thing with Nas Reed. Like Nas Reed can space the floor similar to Cat. And I think he's a little more nimble, a little bit more under control than Cat. So you probably need him out there. Jaden is one I don't think we can afford to budge on. Because of the defense. Because of the defense. Okay. That's I fair. think even if he's struggling with KD, put him on book or you know, put him on Bradley Bill. I think that's one guy, even if he's struggling offensively, I think you, at least these guys are just yeah. off for Phoenix. I think he has to get ticked just from the standpoint Fair. of like you, you need that defense on the floor. You know, he's, yeah. he's arguably, and I, and I and I would say it's Ant when it comes to pure defense, but he's arguably your best, your best defender. And he's the most like lengthy defender that can really go at uh, um, Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. Now, I, again, you got to double team these guys no matter what, probably, you know, especially, you know, KD, even off ball at times, you might need to double team him. And like I said, bump him off his spots and things of that nature. But Jaden is gut. He's going to have to be a part of that. He's going to have to be a part of that physicality and things of that nature. So I, I'm with you. And I, and, and this is what I'll say. And it's a similar thing with Cat. Maybe not the defensive thing, but offensively, you know, if he's struggling to get it going from, from the outside, I, I would get Nas in there. But like, it's about a confidence thing, too. So, like, I think Coach Finch has done a great job of letting everybody know in his own way that if you got it going, I'm going to leave you out there. Mm-hmm. If you ain't got it going, I'm going to pull you. He's the, he's done that this year. Where yep. He's like the, 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 the lineups have been very fluid. So I think he's already set the precedent for that. But you don't want to do it too much to your best. Like Nas and Cat are two of your best players. So you don't want to do that too much and shake that confidence because if you shake that confidence against stars on the opposite side of the ball – you're in for a long series. So he has to have yeah. he has to have really good judgment of when I should pull guys, when sure. I should start. I really think too, and this might be a later take for Taxi Squad and for Wolves Takes. I think that 
to start fourth quarters, you got to limit the amount of time that Ant is off the floor. Because hmm. I know they've done this pretty much all season where he's off the floor for a chunk of time in the fourth. You might have to limit that from five, seven minutes to maybe two. Like, Ant, you might not get a ton of rest in this series. But you, what is he, 22? He's okay. He, he, he's okay. You got, you got to be out there as much as possible. He's okay. Um, but I hear what you're saying. I just think that, yeah. and, you know, I... I I th- I'm glad he set the precedent for this is this is how I run things. It's not unusual if Cat is off, we pull him. Yeah. If Nas is off, we rotate. If Car- if Kyle Anderson is not playing well, we bring somebody. It's not unusual, sure. so I'll say that. So yeah, maybe benching candidates was maybe a little bit too harsh on pull my em. part. You in terms pull them. At least be conscious of it. Pull them, limit their pull. minutes, and don't be afraid to give those minutes to players that are playing very well. Because, like, I you agree. lay this out. Like, sure, Jane McDaniels is really good on defense, and that's really valuable. But if Nikhil Alexander-Walker is also providing that same defense while also providing that shooting that Jane hasn't been able threes. to, the, the corner, corner threes. threes, Phil Jackson loves them, can't get enough of them. And so that's when I would be like, all right, don't be afraid to have Na play more minutes than Jaden. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. Obviously, you're not going to bench these guys entirely. You need them to win but if you see Nas, if you see Nas I should say struggling again like he did these past couple of games with Phoenix I mean if you can count on the size of Carl and Gobert to get you through especially because you're facing smaller lineups anyway then what I'm saying to Chris Finch is don't be afraid to limit minutes of players who are struggling even if they are your star players if they're not delivering the results for you then that's all that matters you need to play the guys that are actually mattering the most and they're actually giving you results that's why the wolves had to bench carl Anthony towns and d'angelo russell in times against the grizzlies a couple of years ago so um it's it's gonna be a lot of mixing and matching i imagine artists we're gonna see lineups that maybe we've never seen the timberwolves put out there before i i would be most encouraged by that because Again, one, you don't want to break, break – if it ain't broke, don't fix it too right. much, that kind of thing. But, again, we need to do something, something that punches the Phoenix Suns straight in the mouth game one. We have to set the tone game one. I think game one is as must win as a game one as any playoff series can pretty much be because you're already doubted in this series pretty much by all the odds makers, all the betters, maybe even by your own fan base to a degree because I got to admit reading what fans have been saying uh, reading what fans have been saying listening to radio doing all this kind of stuff just diving into what Minnesotans have been talking about the last couple days not a lot of you are counting yeah. that the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to win this series yeah and frankly that that's fair that might ultimately be true but Phoenix has been a very inconsistent team all, all season, season long folks yes. they are hitting right now they've kicked your butt all season long so it does seem more intimidating than maybe it actually is and again when you've got three definitive star players too just the image of that is also hard a hard enough mental obstacle to overcome but Again, if these wolves are serious, yeah, and damn it, I want them to be serious I think because they are. it's just I think it they seems are. different this year. Now, Grant, sure, there's definitely things that we have been able to point out that be like, ah, are you guys truly ready for this moment? We we've been able to do that, but again, we it, it has felt different all season long, and. Yeah, they might not ultimately get it done against the Phoenix Suns, but artists, they are not going to go quietly into the night. There are no, There's no way their howl will be turned into a whimper. There, nothing of that kind of sort. I expect the Wolves to show up in this series much more than they showed up against the Phoenix Suns in the regular season. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna ask your prediction as well, but I'm just gonna throw it out here as well. I'm rocking the Wolves hoodie. How yeah. could I not say no to the Minnesota Timberwolves? Wolves Listen, in seven, if I wasn't, baby. Wolves in seven. Let's if, go. If I wasn't fresh off work, then I will have on some type of Wolves apparel myself. But I'm fresh <laughs> off work. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all gonna get the work uniform. But Aww. this is what I'm gonna say, and uh, this is where the optimism dies down for me. I think the Wolves win the series, but I think it has to be in six games. Has to be in six. It has to be in six games. Why six? I don't want game seven. Too much time for KD. I, I, I don't want. I don't want game seven, even though it's at home. <laughs> I don't want game seven against. De- now, granted, I will say this: last time I seen Devin Booker, I believe yes, the last time I've seen Devin Booker in the game seven, it did not go well. He played against the Mavs. I think hmm. at the time they had Chris Paul. There was no Kevin Bo- uh, uh, Kevin Durant. And they got ran out of the building. And mm-hmm. this was in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that to say that they have any immaculate, you know, um, game seven record. But KD in the game seven is dangerous if you it, it's dangerous if you don't have the correct formula for him. Like mm-hmm. if you try all of these things, bumping them off his spots, throwing different bodies at him, and he still got it going and it gets to game seven, he knows what you're gonna throw at him. 
I mean, he already has an idea, but he knows what what you're going to throw on throw at him. He's already dealt with that defense already. He already kind of knows how to attack you. It's tough. Um, so I, I – and then I just – I just, I just the don't heart know and the I, brain I just, are clashing in artist's body. He doesn't know what to do. Folks. I just, I just don't know. And 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 again, it's it, I, I've been very optimistic about the Timberwolves all season long. I've been very, very optimistic, very positive. But I will say, I'm not sure if I trust them in a game seven scenario yet. I'm just not sure. Not against that team. Now, if you were going up against maybe like a Warriors. Or maybe like uh, what other teams are in the Pelicans, maybe. Yep. Or if you're, or if you're going up against a team that doesn't have, you know, a ton of experience at the star level. Like I bring up the worst, they have experience, but they really only got one star that's gonna go crazy in the game seven, and we've seen that. Yeah. For the Suns, you got like three guys mm-hmm. who could like legit go off potentially in the game seven, and then for the Wolves, you got some guys, but like. Carl Anthony Towns, Nas Reed in the game seven. Even and I think it'll be his first ever game seven. That's okay. a lot of pressure. So good. Get it done in six <laughs> is my take. Get it done in six, I would say. And if it goes seven and you get the win, oh, yeah. I will happily tip my cap. Yeah. And and be happy I'm wrong. But I just I don't I that I trust him to do a lot of things. I don't know about a game seven against that team. At, Maybe you get after you get out of the first round. Mm. Maybe you see Denver in the game seven, or you see OKC in the game seven. I might have a little bit more optimism there because the monkeys off your back of getting out of the first round. You beat KD and Devin Booker, and that confidence is there. It's different, but like for the first round with everything on the line, first time in like twenty some odd years, this is the game to get. I don't know if I trust it, Jason. I don't know if I. Oh, but it's so fun. It's the best two words in all sports: game seven. And look, you can't back down from those kind of opportunities, artists. Right? If you're in a game seven. It's go time. Like yes. mentally, it, it is time to go. And I would, I would very much be. Imb- I would embrace the wolves finding that opportunity. Um, yeah, that would that would be. I mean, the ideal scenario would, would be wolves in four, wolves in four. Uh, mm-hmm. But that is definitely probably not going to happen. I yeah, that would be great. Artist best case scenario, I think, would be six games. Uh, it's just, I think this series is going to be an absolute dogfight. Um, I know Phoenix is going to expect a different Minnesota team, and the Wolves are definitely going to want to prove themselves just based off how they played against Phoenix uh, as of recent. I saw, too, a stat that uh, Devin Booker is 10-0 and in his last 10 games against the Wolves, or at yeah, least man. the Suns are 10-0 and in the last uh, 10 games that uh, he has been in the lineup for them against the Timberwolves. Um, but again, that's regular season stuff. That doesn't matter here. It is time for the playoffs. And so it begins. It's so exciting. Again, we don't find ourselves here in the scenario so much. But Wolves fans, I just got to say, look, we got we to gotta play good teams eventually in the playoffs. So yes. don't be afraid of this. Embrace this. Because again, like I mentioned, if we win, it's all in, in terms of going towards the NBA Finals. If we Confidence beat this Phoenix booster. team, I think we can beat pretty much any other team in the Western Conference. But if they lose, <laughs> yeah, man, we will break it down so thoroughly on the Score North Taxi Squad. It will be juicy. It will be meaty. It will create narratives all throughout next season until we see the Wolves once again in the first round of the playoffs for them to finally prove they can get out of it. Yes. Yeah. But... Uh, I'm getting not. I maybe shouldn't have worn a sweatshirt because now I'm getting a little warm and a little bit sweaty. This is what happens when NBA playoffs are upon us. And also, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got this thing called the NFL draft. Also, just right around the corner. And honestly, artists, I felt a little checked out from everything going on with the NFL just because of everything going on in the NBA. It's been so exciting here in town, but still, things are just happening in terms of rumors speculation smoke screens it's been like this for the last couple weeks you really don't know what to believe but there was still a couple tidbits about your minnesota vikings that are worth talking about here on the taxi squad and frankly we're going to start with something that has absolutely nothing to do with the nfl draft it's the fact that our very beloved star wide receiver justin jefferson decided to skip voluntary offseason conditioning over the past week now obviously we are fully aware 
aware of the contract situation Justin Jefferson is in. He's currently negotiating with the Vikings, and he is an unrestricted free agent coming uh, after the end of the year. Now, let's, you know, maybe pour some water on these hot coals because C.D. Lamb, the star receiver for the Dallas Cowboys, also was skipping these workouts. And I believe Justin Jefferson skipped these voluntary offseason conditioning workouts last season CD. as well. Is C.D. getting ready to hold out, though? CDs the Cowboys, dude. The Cowboys, considering they don't know what they're gonna do with Dak, even though I'm guessing Dak is probably gone. The Cowboys might just be trying to hit the reset button after a year, which you'd be happy about that. But uh, but again, this is not about the Cowboys. This is about the Vikings. But artists, are you concerned at all with JJ missing any time at these voluntary? Let's keyword here off season conditioning workouts. No, because we know what it is. Um, we know. First off, he did this last last season. And even if this is about the money, we we know this already. Like, we know J.J. is due for a new contract. We know that we're going to have to pay him the bank in order for him to be a Minnesota Viking going forward. I think Kwesi is aware of that. Um, I think there was – and I could be wrong. Don't quote me on this. But I thought there was a statement that was put out, like, we are not trading Justin Jefferson. We're yep. trying to make sure he's here. Yep. For So – we know what it is. I, I'm not too worried about a guy like Justin Jefferson showing up to voluntary camp. Um, there's a lot of players who who don't, especially established players. Um, but you gotta pay him. I don't. I mean, I mean, you gotta make the right pick at, at in a draft as far as quarterbacks are concerned because he's watching, mm-hmm. and you got you gotta give him what he's asking for at the end of the day. Whatever that dollar amount is, you gotta pay him. Um, so, but am I concerned about this? Nah. Like it'd be one thing if it was his first time doing it. Mm-hmm. I will be like, okay. And even then, it's kind of like, I mean, eh, it's Justin Jefferson. I'm not going to trip about that. Now, mandatory, it's like, okay. Yep. Yep. You know, We're going to so. be watching then. Yep. Uh, voluntary is the key word in all of this. He hasn't been to these before. I don't even know if previous seasons, um, like his rookie year or second year, he went to these two. I'm guessing his rookie year, he probably went. Well, actually, no, he couldn't have gone his rookie year because that would have happened before he was drafted. Anyway, I'm not worried about this. I'm not going to be worried about this, frankly. Until early June, Mm because that's when mandatory mini camps start for the Minnesota Vikings. And that is when we see players kind of skipping out and holding out on contract negotiations. And obviously we've seen these kind of things go into training camp, too. That is the worst case scenario for me, even more so than the Wolves getting the three seed and having to play the Phoenix Suns. That would be a worst case scenario artist for me is if these if, if he doesn't have his contract by training camp because you lose a lot of reps in training camp. We're also going to be doing another split squad thing with the Cleveland Browns. So I found I find that even more valuable than preseason games because you're actually doing in-game reps in those practices. You're actually yeah. like diving into your own playbook. So are the defenses and you're not just, you know, seeing what second and third stringers can do like the preseason games are. They're actually legitimate competition. So no, um, and, and seeing another receiver deal with this right now and CD lamb also kind of uh, put some water on the coals for me as well. Uh, but it should any, know because CD yeah. is about to hold out. That's yeah, like, yeah, nah, that's that, that's fair. That's not, that's that that fair. comparison is a little tough because CD, yeah, mm. CD is not happy. Same boy. thing with Brandon Ayuk. These and guys I'm guessing are not happy. CD wants to be paid just as much as JJ, but he probably won't be. I don't know. I mean, or you think maybe. they'll be paid the same? You think it will be paid the same? Oh my gosh! I hope. I well, I, I actually, I take that back. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I hope Dallas Sa- does. Says the guy who's got a team-friendly Devontae Smith contract on the books for the Eagles. You Shout guys. Out to Shout on, out to Devontae. Shout out to Smitty, man. Come on, but, Howie. But, but, but anyway, the Vikings and a little bit of the Cowboys. <laughs> I hope that the Cowboys decide to give him that much. I mean, cuz CD I mean CD I believe is a top 5 receiver. In oh the no league. doubt. No he doubt. should be paid like a top 5 receiver. But like Justin Jefferson money is going to be ridiculous. It is. Like I don't think anybody maybe this side of Tyreek Hill should be resetting the market like Justin Jefferson is yep. about to probably reset the market. Yep. So, uh we'll see what they do, but if that's the issue, like he want to be played, like JJ, I could understand why Jerry Jones and uh, ownership over there is like, eh, yeah, yeah, that's that's well, that's. I mean, I mean, he's nice, but that's steep. Th- they should frankly be looking at their entire roster situation, and be going, eh, I don't know if this is gonna work. Eh, so yeah, frankly, the too. the Cowboys actually should probably keep things more open than the Minnesota Vikings because it looks like the Vikings are going to get the reset, get a young quarterback, whereas the Cowboys are kind of stuck in Kirk Cousins territory, kind of with Dak Prescott, and they're kind of just trying to figure out, all right, should we keep this guy around because Mm -hmm. maybe he could get us there? Maybe. Lord, I mean, if he's anything like Kirk Cousins, we know that as Vikings fans, uh, it's probably uh, not going to work. But uh, best of luck to Dak and the Cowboys, except Artis would never say that. But uh, but I guess I can. Uh, The other tidbits about the Vikings that came up this week, Jeremy Fowler, 
might as well just get paychecks from the Minnesota Vikings or from Minnesota media outlets because this guy is literally just on top of pretty much any draft news that I hear about the Vikings happening over it. the last couple of months. I got it. three tidbits just from Jeremy Fowler alone. He works for ESPN, by the way. Uh, he had these three tidbits that multiple evaluators are pointing out that Minnesota is the perfect place for one North Carolina quarterback, Drake May. Uh, he also said that J.J. McCarthy could be a good fit for the Vikings or Denver. He was very specific about the Vikings or Denver. And then finally, I don't know if this has much to do with the Vikings, but I don't know. I mean, we can't rule it out that uh, Bo Nix, who hasn't oh, been talked about too much Lord. on this program, too much, uh, might not be good in pressure situations based off personal evaluations that NFL teams have done per Jeremy Fowler. Now, the Minnesota Vikings might be one of those teams that did a personal evaluation on Bo Nix, and so that's why I'm bringing it up. But obviously, <laughs> I just brought up three quarterbacks, and none of those reports definitively truly linked or gave us any indication about what the Vikings are going to do. I'm still willing to talk about it. But I don't know. Do you have honestly? I, I got to admit, I've I'm getting more Drake Steam vibes. Drake May Steam vibe. Drake May Steam vibes lately over the last couple weeks. I don't know how you feel. I just feel like his name's getting brought up a more more and more. But I don't know. Is there any anything here to any of this, or do we just need to wait another week and finally get to the draft and actually have some definitive results for us to talk about? Honestly, <laughs> uh, I mean, a lot of it is probably nine times out of ten smoke screens because uh, that's what happens around this time. Um, I I don't know, man. Like I, <laughs> I, I like I, I'm not I'm not sold um, on Bonix, even though Bonix does have eye popping numbers. I will admit that. Um, I'm de- and and I know a lot of people are high on Drake May. I just haven't seen it. Yeah, I just I haven't seen enough. That's fair. I haven't seen enough. The tape is um, a little questionable on the, May. A lot of people is- pointed out the decision making, the bad throws. My only thing with Drake May is he's kind of the youngest out of the group. He, he's and pretty that's, young, that's and cool, he is. But- he's I don't know. He's maybe making mistakes at that age that all these other guys were too. And he just doesn't have the uh, these extra years of college under his belt like some of these other guys do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 Josh um, Allen wasn't great in college either, and that's kind of been the biggest comp with Drake May. But I, artist, just it doesn't smell good to him. I mean, no, just look at that face. There's a little bit of stench to it. No, yeah. no, Jason, man. The Drake May know, milk's man. gone bad. Yeah, maybe I just, a few. I, I, don't mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Like, I'm saying this today, and and I and I've wavered. If people have been watching, which I know they have, <laughs> I've wavered back and forth. I, at one point, I was like, hey, if you get Drake May, get Drake May. <laughs> And like now today, I'm like, mm, I don't know. No, like I. That's this is why. This is why they can't bring me in, Jason. <laughs> they can't bring me in to make these decisions because I would just every other day. I don't know. You know, I. I'm really iffy. I'm iffy on JJ. I'm iffy on Drake May because I feel like I haven't seen enough. I'm really high on Jaden Daniels. I'm really, really, really high on Michael Penix. So I think a lot of people are sleeping on, and I really still have hope, and I don't think it will happen. But I still have hope that they find a way to get him um, and they start looking at him a little more. Um, but, I mean, I'm just going to put it like this. <laughs> a lot of it, again, is smokescreen. I think you got to do your due diligence and look at everybody. I think you got to evaluate and figure out who your guy is. Do not draft Bo Nix. <laughs> hey, I lose 20 bucks. Do not. <laughs> well, I just need Bo Nix to get drafted above Michael Penix. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Just 20 bucks. Uh, yeah. That's don't, it. Don't, That's don't draft Bo Nix. Um, he had but, 45 touchdowns of three interceptions last I, I season. I mean, he has eye-popping That's numbers. So amazing. <laughs> I'll admit, it's just crazy. <laughs> he has eye-popping numbers, but it's like, ah, 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 <laughs> whatever that, Whatever that sound <laughs> like, effect is supposed to mean. Uh, I can't think. Uh, what an NFL player evaluation right uh, there. Uh, 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 how do you feel about uh, Bo Nix? Uh, I feel like that's the sound that Bill Belichick would probably make if ever he were at the Combine just watching all these guys do the 40-yard dash. Uh, uh, right. Uh, it's just, I, I just, sound I, like I'm, the- I'm sold on a couple guys and then I'm not sold on others. But I, yeah. I'm a, like I said, smoke screens. But at the end of the day, come draft day, I trust whatever the Vikings, I mean, whatever they do, we're going to talk ourselves in circles talking about these quarterbacks. Like at the end of the have. day, yeah, we already, <laughs> we already have. have. At the end of the day, right, I think – no, no. I was about to say by the time we record again, the draft will be over, but that's not No, the case. no, we're, we're going to do one more right no, before. And just to let people know, we are going to do a heavy draft preview next week. Yes. We're going to dive in a couple days before the draft, give that about 24 to 48 hours of marinade to let you guys watch and listen to it. Uh, considering there will only be two Wolves games that have that will have happened up till that point, um, we'll probably put the, the first two Wolves games 
uh, after we talk about the Viking stuff. But yeah, oh, d- no, no, way. probably no, I'm just like, I, yeah, we, we lean, probably. we lean towards the host. We lean towards the host. We're, we're, we're both the host here, but we'll yes. see what happens. We're, we'll have a production meeting. Either way, you'll get fantastic Minnesota sports content of as course. you always do. Here on Taxi Squad. But yeah, I'm with you. I trust artists. what the Vikings do. I'll just put it like yes, that. Just, as yes. long as they don't draft Bo we, Nicks, we might, it's like I don't trust it. We also might have a special guest rejoining the program next week. Maybe a founding father of the Taxi Squad. If you know who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. But I'll just keep that tease as a tease. So yeah, another incentive for you to check out next week. Other than just the crazy things are going to happen with Minnesota sports. But yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of with you, Artis. I am at the point where I am just thoroughly Exhausted yes. by all of I'm this. I'm exhausted by the mock drafts, the Kuipers, the McShays, just all of it. And I know, like, we probably even haven't seen the most mock drafts yet. I'm sure we're going to get a ton. Uh, yeah, yeah, over the next week, pretty much, of just everybody's seven round full mock drafts and everything. It's a lot to keep track of. And also, it just makes me just also just kind of hone in on these quarterbacks more and more. That's just it. That's that's kind of the only problem with being so focused on a quarterback when you're a quarterback needy team is that I feel like I need to do much more research on some of the other potential players that the Vikings could get also in the first round. If, you know, God forbid, you know, they end up keeping two first round picks somehow, some way, or they don't trade up for a quarterback. It's just going to be a full week of deep diving into the NFL draft. I'm so ready for just for us to know who our guy is going to be. Whether mm-hmm. he is good or bad is irrelevant to me. Yeah. Just to know who the name is going to be on the back of the purple jersey, who we're going to have, you know, probably at the Rotunda, the introductory press conference at the Mall of America or something like they did for Jimmy Butler or whenever we get brand new players coming into town. I just want to know who you are. It's like playing one of those games where – um, you know, you don't get to see your date, but you get to talk to them the whole time and you're just building this anticipation, talking to them like, oh my gosh, I think this person's super cool. Well, I just want the curtain to be unveiled and I just yeah. want to see who it finally is, even if it is a disappointment, even if it ultimately isn't the person that I want it to be. I am just ready and i can't believe i believe as a score north employee i am saying this i am ready for the reckless speculation (laughs) to be over with because i can't handle it i'm talking myself in circles i just want us to draft a guy and move on and if he stinks then guess what we get to do it all over again in two or three years and it'll be fantastic and we'll talk ourselves in circles again oh let's let's hope that does not happen let's hope the vikings are on the clock Let's hope that. Yes, let's get our guy. Let's get our guy. Maybe Sam Darnold will be the guy. Just kidding. Just kidding. That's a conversation for a whole, whole nother day. A little couple bookkeeping uh, notes I have about anything else going on in Minnesota sports. Um, I don't have a lot to say about the Minnesota Twins as we got to wrap up Taxi Squad pretty much uh, here shortly. Carlos Correa is on the IL. Artists, we're just losing pieces left and right. Yohan Duran maybe getting some bullpen work in, so that's good. But the bullpen hasn't been the biggest issue for the Twins. It's obviously been the offense. They got swept by the Baltimore Orioles today. The offense is still, I believe the average is still below 200 overall as a team, which I think is dead last in Major League Baseball. Uh, Matt Walner got sent down as well. <sighs> Man, it is. Is just it's getting ugly. darker it's and ugly. darker and darker with each passing week. That prediction I had just just a couple weeks ago, artists of them winning 89 games, getting uh, first in the division again. I don't know. Cleveland's playing decent. Kansas City is playing really good right now for whatever reason. They might regress to the mean eventually, but we're losing ground and we are losing ground fast. Mm. And we don't have the personnel right now to potentially gain that ground. Baseball's a funny thing. You go on long win streaks. That can happen. But as of right now, just, man, and I thought the Minnesota Twins did enough to themselves in the offseason to kill momentum. But now you have all these injuries happening as well, and the product just isn't good. You're not as bad as the Chicago White Sox, who have all, who are like 2-14 and 14 right now and have been shut out like seven or eight times already this season, which is just absolutely delicious. But similar to how the Minnesota Wild did this earlier in the year, I'm worried the Twins are going to dig themselves a hole that they will not be able to dig themselves out of. It is tracking this way. I don't know. It rains and pours, man. Uh, Yes, I know. And 
yeah, maybe the, it just needs to get warmer. The weather needs to be shut up. I, I'm, I, I heard that excuse again from people, and it's just, it's just driving me nuts. There are cold weather city teams that don't play in dome stadiums that are producing much better offensive numbers than the Minnesota Twins. Teams like uh, Boston and New York. It's just don't don't use the cold weather thing again. Like it's just such a cliche Minnesotan thing. Drives me nuts. And lastly, Minnesota Wild. I just have to mention this because Mark Andre Fleury will be returning next season. He did sign a contract extension he did announce as well it will be his last season his swan song but in terms of just having a little bit more stability at the gold time position for the minnesota wild i don't think this is a bad thing maybe this can be a tandem between him and jesper wallstad next season that would be my ideal hope i don't know if you're going to be able to trade philip gustafson or at least trade him to get something that you want but i would guess he'd Jesper's been, and he's actually got to play a little bit as the Wild. They have been eliminated. They've been out, and so they've gotten some young prospects to come up and play, like Liam Ogren, obviously Jesper Wallstad. So we'll see. He's older, too. We'll see what his workload might be for Marc-Andre Furry. But in terms of just a strong locker room presence, there's literally nobody probably more valuable to that roster than Marc-Andre Fleury. So for him to be back is a okay with me, and it's just it's just cool to have Hall of Fame players of on course. your roster, no, no matter what capacity, even if they're older and they're not in their primes. It's still just cool to say, you know, for Wild fans to be able to go get those Mark Andre Fleury sweaters and jerseys and stuff like that, and to actually say, hey, you had a Hall of Fame player and you got to see a Hall of Fame player play at least for a little bit. Kind of, I would imagine you with uh, having LeBron on the Lakers are just yeah. very similar. Obviously, you guys have reaped a lot more benefits of having LeBron on your team, and obviously, LeBron is not the same kind of <laughs> Mark Andre Fleury isn't on the same level as LeBron James, but still, it's an appreciation. You didn't really expect maybe to see this guy on your team, but you just appreciate the moment while you have it. Um, anyway, final thoughts at all, artists, before we got to wrap up the show. I know I got to start a uh, basketball game here on 1500 yeah, in a man. second, so we got to wrap it up. Wolves fans, yeah. take the fear out of your voice. Show up to the games. Cheer. Let's be go. loud. Let's okay. go. Talk trash. Yeah. It is playoff time. Comes with four. it. Wolves and if and they four. start slow, which I hope they don't, don't don't be tense. Don't be nervous. You Minnesota fans let's, get that way. We know how we act. We know how we are. Let's 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 muster up that confidence and and just give the team because Maybe. that projects on the team sometimes. Yeah. Give the team that hope. We need home court advantage to be home court advantage. Mm-hmm. So. Let's 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 sell it out and let's uh let's get a dub, man. Let's 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 get out of first round. Yes. Let's get out of first round. Yes. It's not that much to ask, to be honest with you. Come I don't on. Think it's much to ask. Come on. We got this. What? Yeah. And maybe stop by, grab some extra beers too, Wolves fans. That'll get you nice and loosened up <laughs> and everything. But Target Center's been rocking this year. Don't get too loose. You guys don't get too loose. Don't want to get kicked <laughs> out or anything. Be responsible. Uh anyway, Target Center, you'll kill it. Have a wonderful time for everybody going to game one and game two. Rock that place. It's gonna be awesome. Game one, two thirty tip. Saturday at Target Center, I believe, right? They announced the schedule is 2.30, yeah. I believe. Yeah, Perfect I believe so, afternoon yeah. matinee game for the Minnesota Timberwolves taking on the Phoenix Suns. Ah, I'm so excited. I already can't wait to talk about everything <laughs> next week, including the big NFL draft preview. But that's going to have to wrap up things for this week. I am Jason Stormer. That is Artis Woods. And thank you again so much for listening and watching the Score North Taxi Squad. Take care. Bye-bye. Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs>